How's it going guys? We got Professor Meatball here. We got money here. We have uh, Andrew Crop asking, is there, an, explain like I'm five about a, you know, a gamma squeeze and what a short squeeze are and who is going to pay for the gamma for the GME shares when they hit a thousand dollars. Now we covered that a lot with expert GME researchers like Rensel and uh, Hey It's Pixel earlier. So we are uh, going to cover it as quickly as we can so that you fully get a sense of what is yet to come and what might be the most most uh, once in a lifetime opportunity that you've ever been a part of. And right now we're seeing GameStop trading at a quarter thousand dollars. Uh, this video might be very, very different very, very soon, depending on whether Pixel's uh, theory comes true of whether or not this is going to end up being the mother of all short squeezes. So don't go anywhere as I explain. The, is there explain like I'm five about what a gamma squeeze is? Uh, a gamma squeeze is the idea that people can buy call options, which uh, don't go anywhere if you are uh, concerned about what a call option is. A call option is the option to buy a share of a stock at a certain price uh, for a premium, right? You guys are probably understand that it costs money to make money. Uh, so that premium is uh, when you go to a bookie at a racehorse uh, track, and then you say, I want to bet on, uh, on GME. I think that GME is going to be first place tomorrow, right? And that's how, and that's the expiry date tomorrow. And uh, how the, the prediction that you think that GME right now, maybe GME is like third or fourth, but it's going to be first place by tomorrow. Well, the bookie is going to listen to your bet and say, thanks for the bet. Uh, that'll be, you know, a fraction of how much the the price of the stock is, maybe like 20 bucks. So it's going to be 20 bucks, but it's going to be 20 bucks for, uh, for 100 bets on GME. So that's each contract is going to be 100 shares of GME. So when you go in and ask, hey, uh, I want to buy um, the premium for 100 bets of GME, then you have to pay up to $2,000. So right now that's why contracts, uh, option contracts, uh, puts and calls are usually reserved for people who have extra capital. So there we go. Uh, that is a uh, an option. And when the GME starts rising, let's say that GME starts rising up to $800, um, uh, Meatball, here, have some scratches. There you go. Uh, it, let's say that GME goes up to $800 or so gets closer to the value of the, of the price that you set, right? You said that I think GME is going to get to first place. The horse GME is going to get to first place. That is the strike price. The first place right here is the $800 in the analogy. As it gets closer and closer to first place, the bookie is actually going to jump on this bet with you. At the beginning, he just heard your bet and he took your money, $2,000 of it, and isn't going to do anything because he doesn't have to. He doesn't think that GME is going to win. Right now, maybe GME is at like 40 bucks, 50 bucks. Even if it's at 250, there's almost no chance it's going to get up to $800 by tomorrow. That's crazy. So they're not going to do anything. They're just going to take your money and go. But when it gets closer and closer to the 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 place that you said it was going to be, closer and closer to the strike price that you predicted, they're going to have to buy. They're going to have to buy the share of the stock and basically double down, piggyback on your bet so that they don't miss out on too much. The risk profile of someone who is naked in their option, someone who doesn't buy into the stock uh, as it closes in on the strike price, is way higher than someone who has covered their option, which means that they actually bought the stock and it will allow you to buy it at the price that you, they promised you to buy it. Uh, and it's going to be very helpful if they bought it at a lower price than you are going to buy it. So that is called delta hedging, right? You are changing up the game by piggybacking right before the uh, strike price or maybe at the strike price so that you don't miss out or, mi or make uh, you know, a bad boo-boo and miss out on some money. The problem with that is that we are now rolling a big old snowball. A gamma squeeze is when all of these prices start getting closer and closer to different strike prices. And it's entirely based on how many call options there are. So let's say that a call option uh, has is at $300, right? And that's the strike price. Well, it rolls past 300 and now my bet that it's gonna be $400, ugh, there. Now my bet that it's gonna be $400 rolls past it as well. Each time the hedge, the hedge funds have to uh, uh, hedge their bets, uh, the institutions that sold you this contract needs to hedge their bets, they're actually uh, increasing the price of the stock by increasing their position, right? By buying the stock, you increase the position, uh, uh, the price of the stock. So therefore, uh, this is exactly what a gamma squeeze is, a snowball that rolls onwards from strike price to strike price, being in the money, 
which means uh, the price of the stock is actually higher. And then uh, it is ends up being a pretty uh, insane amount of money, but uh, it's something that is actually predictable, something that is different than a short squeeze because it has only a, a limit, right? Some people cannot buy uh, call options higher than a certain amount. And right now there are a ton of call options at $800, which is why the $800 floor is so likely that the price of the stock has basically nowhere to go but up if it hits $800 because there's going to be 13 million as of yesterday, possibly double that uh, number of shares that needs to be bought by these institutions that sold these bookies that sold the, the contracts. So that is a gamma squeeze. Now, what? how does that affect a short squeeze? Well, a short squeeze is the fact we've covered in a, a couple of different videos uh, that people who have sold shorts uh, by selling a stock that doesn't belong to them need to eventually give that stock back. And how do they do it? Well, they have to buy the stock back. And uh, how long do, do they have to take to buy that stock back? Well, it depends on the short, but sometimes they can just keep paying interest uh, and never ever give the stock back uh, until, uh-oh, a margin call. What is a margin call? Well, it is basically when they uh, when the stock price has gone so much higher than when they originally shorted it at uh, that they uh, that even if they liquidated all of their positions, they won't be able to afford um, the the uh, covering all the shorts that they owe. All shorts must cover. So when they end up having uh, this. Uh, so it's essentially just a race of how much money they have compared to how high the price of the value of the stock is. So it's a race of if the gamma squeeze, which is like gasoline being poured on a, a bunch of dry tinder, which is the shorts, the gamma squeeze here is the gasoline and the dry tinder here is the shorts. We covered this in the Forbes article as well. A, a big expert uh, mainstream editor goes and talks about that specifically. And now we have to cover the last question of Andrew's uh, Andrew Crop's question. Who is gonna pay for Jamie's shares when they hit $1,000? Well, it's most likely gonna be the, the hedge funds that liquidate their positions, right? The hedge funds that sold the shorts have to pay first. If they then go bankrupt, then there's gonna be some other ramifications of insurance, which is the uh, part of how the DTCC is now changing the rules that they don't have to pay in the future, uh, but that isn't gonna go into effect until later. And if the short squeeze is triggered before that policy gets tr uh, actually added to the number of rules that they have, uh-oh, there's gonna be some pretty crazy stuff happening in the future. So if you guys like this explanation, if you guys uh, wanted to see more about that Forbes article or more about what Rensel uh, and ha Hey It's Pixel has to say, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like this video and watch those videos alongside. These are the people that matter to the channel so, so much. These are the officers of the Meatball Army who have gotten their MBA, their certificate of, uh, of satisfaction, not certification, of course. And these are the people who are the Meatball all the space legend tears. Thank you so much for supporting the show and we'll see you in space.